Hi, I'm Caitlin Hyam, the Student Music Network's Northwest Officer, and today I'm joined by Dylan John Thomas. Hi, Dylan, how are you? Where's that, McKinley and Sound? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm Sound, just been playing a bit of golf. Nice. <laughs> You've recently released a new single called What a Shame. Um, I've been listening to it on repeat. I absolutely love it. I had it on my radio show last night. Um, uh -huh. I love all the different rhythms and the guitar melodies. What is your favourite aspect of What a Shame? I think it's the, well, apart from having about 50 key changes, <laughs> I, was like, I was trying to write a song that would like absolutely take your piss of mm -hmm. like, key changes, but still be able to be functional within yeah. like, a, a, a kind of pop framework, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I, the, I think it's, my favourite bit is, is when it breaks down from, after the, the kind of first chorus, and it goes into a kind of refrain, uh, it goes into a wee kind of, like, kind of triplet bit with a guitar. And it's like something where, like, I take that from, and it was in the 60s. So, 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 so like, nowadays it's very much like kind of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, and then last chorus. Whereas, like, you think about songs in the 60s, where, like, there was many a bands, but I was just, just, just to take the Beatles as, as an example, like they would write songs that would just like veer off into like just something mental for like 30 seconds and come back, especially like the people like the Beach Boys and whatever. And I was trying to take more of a kind of structural side, um, because not, not even any point in like thinking that you'll ever get anywhere near these people. But the in terms of like the structural side, where it was like kind of chorus, verse, and then just chorus, 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 but I've been able to mess about with the, with the, with the keys and whatever. I think uh, I was a, it's a kind of funny student to, to, to write when I, when, I, when I listen to it now. It's like, it's done in a, it's done in a way where it was almost like um, uh, There She Goes by the Laz. That chorus yeah. just comes in like 30, every 30 seconds. And it's, I was trying to write a song like that. Mm -hmm. um, aye. But it's, it's, just, it's, it's quite a funny song in terms of the way all the different aspects of what's going on. It's one of the songs that will feature on your second EP, which is coming out on the 4th of November. Can you tell us an exclusive fun fact about the EP? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think uh, I have that when we recorded it, we had like five five guys in a row. Nice. <laughs> what did you get from five guys? <laughs> uh, bacon cheeseburger and just nice. and Cajun chips. But mm -hmm. uh, I we recorded it in Liverpool on a place called uh, Coastal. Mm -hmm. we, we usually record them past street oh, so that, that, that's been shut down now and uh, they're getting a new place but I recorded it in Coastal uh, me and Rich, Rich Turvey who done in Blossoms a few other people as well his class uh, we produced it and I was, it was class man I enjoyed it well it's always a wee trip well, basically how I record is that I'll record it in mine and I'll get all the parts sorted mm -hmm. and then we'll bounce it into the studio and we'll just kind of replace each track and then we'll add like certain things in it. And it's just it's just a bit more efficient. It means that I can get my shite ideals out in the house rather than being in the studio, do you know what I mean? And just sitting down all over this. I can do that in my own time. Very time efficient. So there's more yeah. time for five guys. <laughs> there you go. And you're going on tour in November and December, playing cities all over the UK. What are you most excited for? Just to be back out, man. We've not been touring for about a year now. Uh, at the end of last year and I there's all just always a buzz when you go on tour there's like I think it's it's the full year kind of culminates towards festival se festival season and then towards a tour so mm -hmm. I think I been able to just get back out on the road and, and uh, play the shows I think it's always in the back of your mind even like when you're writing the songs and when you're I suppose that's how you end up becoming a, a live act in the, in the sense of you write the songs for the live for the live shows as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're imagining the way I and a mindset that I kind of get into is that I'm I'm at the show. Do you know what I mean? It's like what would I be waiting on if I was like a sixteen year old boy and I'm in a crowd? It's just like I don't want to hear somebody sing nonsense for ten minutes with like no drums or anything. Do you know what I mean? And it's like try to find the right balance where you're fitting in all the songs. And that comes through writing the songs in, in that way. Do you know what I mean? There's been there's been a couple of concerts I've been to where it's just like I'm standing about for 25 minutes, just like I don't know any of these songs, like what, what's happening here. And uh, but I, and then there's some people like, for example, the specials, it's like they just, it's just like hit after hit after hit after hit. 
And it's like, no, that we've got any hits, but in terms of the people that come to the shows, the people know the songs. So it's like, just gear them the tunes, you know what I mean? I say that as if we're some sort of reunion band coming back for the 80s <laughs> when I'm playing, it, I'm playing a new album, do you know what I mean? There's nothing worse than that. There's a few bands that I went to see, like, ah, oh, bro, you can go see our hits for the 80s and you turn up and it's just, here's our new album. It's just like, mate, shut up, man. It's like, you know, people have paid 60 quid a ticket, do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it'll be, be good to get back at yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in uh, Manchester it'll be really good you've also said in the past that Jerry Cinnamon is like a brother to you you've gone on tours together um, and he helped you so much at the start of your career what is the most important lesson the best lesson that you learned from Jerry well, there was plenty but in terms of the music side of it, I think the ma- one of the main things was don't get too precious with, with your songs and that is a mental thing as a musician when you write say you've got like 20 songs that you want to release and it's just like there might be like one song and you're like oh this is going to be the one that's going to make it or whatever or, and then you release it and it doesn't really happen it's just like right well you can't get too precious in, t- in the sense of thinking that one song is going to, is going to make it or and I think I, I was, especially when I was young, when I was younger, it's like you have that kind of myth of like just putting it one song or something is going to blow up or whatever. But then you, what you realize, especially in the the kind of thing that we're in, it's like all it is is about writing decent tunes and having and releasing like kind of drip feeding them. Do you know what I mean? Just kind of making sure that you're, that you're consistently releasing decent tunes and. Uh, Aye, and don't get too caught up on why never making it or whatever. And I think that's the main thing as well, is like these gigs are, it's, uh, what's, what blows my mind is when we do these shows is that near enough every single person has a different favourite song. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, that's nuts. And I mean, we've only got like, well, say nine, nine songs or whatever out, but it's that kind of thing, or oh, people prefer certain ones. And I that's interesting because you would always think that it'd be like the main, the one fucking, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. You cut it out. All right. <laughs> The the one song that would be like, oh, that's everybody's favourites, but no, it kind of blows my mind that it's all different. Everybody's got different tastes with it. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was younger, I think that that stuck with me the most in terms of the kind of musical lesson anyway. Well, thank you so much for speaking to me today, Dylan. It's been an absolute pleasure talking well, to you. Thank you very much, guys. And about right.